I'm Michael Jordan with AB Friendly Company, and welcome back down to the Underground Meadery. Remember, it's March, and we're using apples, apple juice, spices. Uh, we're going to take you through a whole process now of making a braggot. Uh, braggots are using grains, and uh, this is one of my favorite grain braggots, and it encompasses a lot of things. Uh, we're going to be putting uh, honey in. A half gallon. This is a half gallon fermenter. We're using a darker bottle uh, because I don't like the light to get to it because if we're using grain, grains will off uh, set with light. So we're using a darker uh, fermentation. It's a half gallon fermentation vessel. We're using two and a half pounds of honey. We're going to be using apple juice. Now remember, it doesn't matter what kind of honey you use or uh, what type of apple juice if you want to juice your own apples remember that apple juice that comes from a store that's uh, not concentrated so will have some residual sugars in it right but uh, basically what we're going to be doing is I'm going to put the honey in the jug or the fermentation device we're using two and a half pounds and then I'm going to make what they call the braggot and what I've done is I've dumped some of this apple juice about half this uh, jug this is a half gallon of apple juice, I put it in this saucepan, and what I've done is I've poured a cup of crystal grain. It's just a light malt grain uh, that I'm using, very light. I'm not using a dark malt. You can use any types of different grain malts that you want. It's going to give out different colors, as well as smells, as well as richness. That the light crystal grains are just going to give it a light beer taste. Uh, kind of like drinking maybe like a Pabst Blue Ribbon, a Budweiser, uh, Coors, uh, the light grade. Not a lot of hops or anything. This has no hops in it. This is going to be an apple braggot. So what I've done is i put a cup of grain in a Muslim cheesecloth bag, and then I've wrapped it so I can stick a stick through it, so I can stick it in the apple juice. And that way it's not sitting on the bottom, but suspended a little bit so it'll bubble and steep so I had this started so I'll just turn this up a little bit here so we can get this rolling boiling again and I want to boil it for about 24 to 30 minutes we already had it boiling for about 15 so that by the time we need it the grains should be boiling out any kind of sugars and the beer taste into the apple juice and then we're going to pour this apple juice in the jug topping it off with some more apple juice that way it doesn't have a too high of a grain taste to it so, two and a half pounds of honey, half gallon of apple juice, and right now, one cup of crystallized grain or crystal malt grain. Uh, we're going to be using some cloves, cinnamon, in fact, it's just a half a cinnamon stick, nutmeg, and some vanilla extract. And what it is, is it's two tablespoons of vanilla extract, one tablespoon of the ground nutmeg, half of a cinnamon stick, and half of a tablespoon of clove. And I, I put all of that in, in this cup here. There's our cinnamon stick. So I got all this in the cup and I've already measured off my vanilla extract put it in this cup. We're going to be using the balloon, which is my favorite airlock method, and the Red Star Premier Champagne Yeast in a yellow pack. And this is all going to make an apple braggot. Uh, it's going to have a great flavor because we're going to be using some of the cinnamon and the spices to bring out the grain and the vanilla to reduce back the heavy taste of it. Uh, it's one of my favorite braggots. Uh, we, we make one called Friar Tuft's Apple Braggot. It has a couple more steps into it because we're actually brocheting some honey with it. We're using two types of honey, so it's a little more of a process. But this is almost like making our Friar Tuck's apple, apple braggot. So the pot's already starting to boil now, so we're boiling and infusing the grains with the apple juice. So we're making the braggot part right here. You want to always keep an eye on that. It's just like when you boil anything, it's going to be hot. You don't want it to overboil better get calmed down by having a 
some wildflower mead. This is just straight wildflower yeast and water. Mm, very sweet. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. We don't want it to just overflow. All right, so let's get started. We're going to go ahead and we'll take our honey. And we're going to pour it in our jug. Got to just keep an eye on that. All right. Now usually when we add our honey, we're going to use it follow up with like some hot water. But since we're going to use the braggot mix, which is the steeped grain, we won't need to do that. And then I also turn around and I take my half gallon jug of uh, apple juice and I put it in the refrigerator so it's really cold. So that way it will balance out and cool this off so we can dump the yeast in. Now the apple juice I can smell really grainy. Uh, it's really starting to put off a really grain smell. Alright, remember I've got my recipe on the back that I follow. And it's called Apple Braggot. Uh, so we've added the honey, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use this funnel here. And I'm going to get some of this apple juice. We're going to get most of the rest of this honey out. So it's not going to take very much. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but this is so much darker than the apple juice when we started, and it's because the grain's infused with it now. So it's the apple juice is going to have a much darker color to it when we add it because of the grain addition. All right, I always save my jugs so I can refill them when we do our own honey. So that way I don't have to get containers for the honey. So this has been boiling and uh, this just sits and steeps in it. You can really smell the aromas of the grain and it changes it. It's almost like tanning it. It's going to give it a different color, different smell and an infusion. This is going pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my hot plate. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take out my grain bag. I just kind of make sure I get all the, the liquid out that I can out of the grain bag. The best way to do that is you take your wooden spoon and just press it against the stick. All right, that's one reason why I put a stick across it. It allows me to push something against it to get the grain juice out. There we go. Now you can dump the grain to your chickens. Mix it up uh, and do your fungal for your mushrooms. So don't throw the grain out. The grain could be used for potting soil and other mixes. So now we'll pour this in here. Let's see, I'll turn a little bit so maybe you can see the color as we go. So you can see how much darker the mix is. Because we've infused it with the apple juice. Now what I've used when it comes to the measurement of the apple juice is basically I took... 
I've taken, this is a half gallon, so I've taken approximately a half of the half gallon and I used it to make the the braggot part, which would be the boiled grain in the liquid. Remember, always keep your lids for everything. Now this is where we're going to melt the honey with the boiled grain. It's hot. So it's going to want to steam a little bit when, when doing stuff. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add my cinnamon stick, our nutmeg and clove. I'm going to add my vanilla extract. That little jostle too. So so far, what you've seen is that we've boiled a, a quarter of a gallon of apple juice, and what we did is added one cup of a light crystal malt grain and we boiled that for about 24 minutes. We put in two and a half pounds of honey, mixed the braggoted apple juice to the honey, got it to dissolve, then we added our clove, our half a stick of cinnamon, our nutmeg and our vanilla. We've got that all mixed in there. Now I'm going to top it off with some cold apple juice right to give out more of the apple taste because when the grain gets in it the grain pretty much kills the residual apple so we're just going to boost up the apple taste now all right very good now I can feel that this is really hot. So I can tell you right now the temperature readings, we're going to have to probably wait to drop the yeast. This is one of those where I would suggest probably waiting uh, 24 hours unless you're running a wort chiller. And a wort chiller unit is the copper tube that runs around that you run cold water through and circulates and comes out the other end. This is a wort chilling device. Be able to hook this onto the tap or a garden hose and then hook your other residual hose on the top here. What it does is it cools the copper. You can stick it in your, your pots and everything and that way you can cool everything down that you're using is faster. Um, for small items like this you can do an ice bath. We're sitting in a sink with some ice water to cool it down or sit in the refrigerator for a period of time or wait for the 24 hours to let it acclimate to the surrounding temperatures of the room. But this already is telling me, yeah, this is uh, 115. So this would kill yeast going into it, it'll just cook it. So when this drops to a better temperature, we'll be able to dump this yeast in it and put the balloon on it. So this will go with it when we're done. But we wanna go ahead and we're going to wait for the temperature drop before we put it on our jug. But we're going to get the starting gravity out of it. So let me get my test tube. And 
we sanitize everything in a dishwasher with hot water and no soap. I'm not a big believer in soap and I'm not using star sand. If you haven't seen us use any star sand or sanitary thing other than hot water in a, in a, in a dishwasher. The hot temperatures of the water and stuff kill about everything that we're going to use. So there's our test tube. Let's see the color here. Now, from all the others, look at the dark amber to that. That's a pretty color. The only other one that you saw that had vibrant colors like this is when we did our like Valentine Blood, Bloody Valentine one with the oranges and stuff. So this one right here is uh, is a little bit darker. Nice. So that says one, one, one point one zero zero. Okay. Sounds pretty good. That's one point one zero zero. One point one zero. Zero. So that's our starting gravity with this one. I'll make sure we get the clothes and all the stuff back in it as best we can. Got a little bit at the bottom there. Let me... All right, just enough to kind of taste it, see if it's got the green and the apple taste and the spices that we want. Oh yeah, it comes off strong right off the bat with the green. And then the uh, cloves and the spices kind of settle it off and then the apple juice towards the end. Um, the sweetness stuff should all settle out once the honey's all been eaten in it. So we're going to set this here with our balloon and our yeast. We'll get things kind of picked up and ready to go. That basically, uh, this will be all set to go in about 24 hours because I'm just going to let it sit and the temperatures cool down but it should be a good uh, apple braggot now remember braggots where you add grain you can just uh, boil water with grain and use the water and grain with your honey uh, you can try different juices to boil with it and uh, I've actually seen some people uh, use a little bit of beer and use straight beer instead of boiling the grain they're just dumping in an, a, a beer into their mead mix because that's just water, grain, and hops, right? And it's uh, the alcohol is not really going to matter once you dump it into your whole mix because it's uh, the gravity from the sugars and stuff are going to change. So I have seen people just add beer to it, but that's about the the stint of a braggot is uh, adding grains to your mead mix. Now in larger scale if you have more grain per sugar output the braggot is a beer out braggot or what we call the honey beer because you're making a beer then with grains and adding a honey for taste now if it's 51 percent of the sugar content being honey and adding the grain for taste it's a braggot so this is a braggot we're using more uh, honey than we would be using for grain. The grains is a tanning agent and a a way to make a beer taste with it. So that you want to make sure there's some difference because if you want to brew beer and add honey to it, that's different than what we just did here. This is a bragging. So once again, 
Thanks for tuning in here at AB Friendly Company and the Underground Meter. Remember, share this post with everybody that you can. Have them subscribe. We do have some events coming out that we want you to check out. That here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, we're going to be doing a mead making class and a tasting. Uh, you should look that up on our event that you'll be down right here at the Underground Meadery tasting some stuff and we're going to film uh, while you guys are here. So check that one out. We're also going to be doing one on April 15th at Neoteric Farms in Colorado. You're going to see us do our medicated blend there in Colorado. So there's two events coming up, one on the 15th of April and one on the 22nd of April. One in Colorado, one here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Hey, thanks for tuning in and spending some time with us here, brewing some mead. Okay. You gotta come, this might be running out of juice. What's that purple deal?